Hi, this is Dennis from Business Model Guru. Today, I'm having a look at the Uber business model, and we've put it onto the business model canvas here for you to have a, a quick look at. Okay, so customer segments. Uber has two main customer segments, the, the passengers, the people who, who want rides, and the drivers who give them rides. Unlike a normal taxi company, the drivers are self-employed. Uber does not employ them directly. It's just matchmaking between drivers and passengers. Now, the value proposition is very much Uber promises to give passengers a taxi when they need it. It promises drivers that they will give them customers when they need it. This is quite different from a normal taxi operation where supply and de demand are, are quite disjointed because the system can't respond flexibly enough to the current market situations. It, Uber is able to do that within minutes or seconds, given the, its technological base. It also uh, makes it easy for people to, to make additional money, it's cash free, lots of small ancillary value, uh, value benefits. Customer relationship, at essence, they're super automated. It's possible to use Uber for years and never talk to an Uber employee. Channels, principally, you use Uber through the mobile app. Pretty much no other way of doing it. And then it reaches people through the app, through email marketing, through the social media, and above all, um, through earned media, through its PR, through people talking about it, and of course, through word of mouth. The key, key resources for Uber are the platform, the technology, the, the app that enables drivers and passengers to communicate very, very easily with each other. Um, and then the, the, the two key parts of that technology are the, the pricing al algorithm, which man matches supply and demand and then adjusts it through the pricing so that it comes into, into balance as quickly as it's possible to do. And then the routing, which gets the, the closest cab to the passenger as quickly as possible and then reduces the journey the journey time. Uh, the partners, the, the drivers will obviously own their cars, replacing the, the taxi companies and Uber shifts off, off a lot of costs and, resor uh, and resource issues onto those drivers. Then you have the payment processes. And, and one of the key things that's often overlooked is the local authorities who, in the long term, Uber needs to, to find a, a good modus operandi to work with and work out what is the, the balance of, of, of licensing and, and freedom to do the business and, and give value to, 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 to paying passengers. The, the revenue is a very standard taxi-based system. You pay for how long you're riding, how long you're, you're actually using the taxi. And then finally, on the cost structure, the huge costs are in the platform development. Yeah, these are huge but they are amortized over so many thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of rides. I think it's almost a billion rides now in, in January 2016. So these huge costs mean that a very small charge is put onto each ride, and that means Uber pricing is very cost effective. Thank you very much for, for listening. Do have a look at the rest of the website. And if you like the work that we do, um, do ask us to do your business, business model for you.